and look at phase shifts. So for 3a, that minus pi over 6, will that move it left, right, up, or down? And since it's inside the function, it's going to be a horizontal translation. And that minus pi over 6, we'll move it pi over 6 to the right, just like our transformations unit from before. So now when we want to graph this, well, it asks us to graph both the cosine graph and the graph with the translation from 0 to 2 pi. So one of the things we're always going to do when we're graphing our cosine graphs, we're going to label our maximum and our minimum. And since the amplitude is 1 and the center line's at 0, your maximum will be 1, your minimum will be negative 1. We'll mark one full period, so I'll graph the regular cosine graph first. One full period is 2 pi, and divide it into four equal sections. So half of 2 pi is pi. half of pi is pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Basically, your axis family. Now, a cosine graph starts at a maximum. So you start at your maximum, and in each of your four sections, you go to your center line, down to a minimum, back to center line, back to a maximum. And this continues on forever. I know that the question the question says just from 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to add the arrowheads on there. We're going to talk about what, a little bit about that at the end. But here's our graph of cosine. Now, when we want to show a phase shift of pi over 6 to the right, what we have to figure out, first of all, is where is pi over 6 on here? So pi over 2, if you think of degrees, pi over 2 is 90 degrees, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So one way you could think of it is pi over 6 should be a third of the way towards pi over 2. And whatever spacing you have for that pi over 6, you're shifting everything pi over 6 to the right. So at every ticking mark along my x-axis, I'm going to move that amount to the right. And because I've labeled pi over 6 to start with, I wouldn't need to label all of those. I've already given the scale, and you could figure it out if you wanted to, but that makes our labeling a little bit easier. So we're going to take each of these key points that we had on our cosine graph, and all we have to do now is shift them pi over 6 to the right and draw our new graph. going through those. And so our green graph here, when you're graphing two things on the same axis, you need to make sure you label which one is which. So my green graph is the regular cosine graph, and my black graph is my graph translated pi over 6 to the right, or y equals cos of x minus pi over 6. And now we've graphed both of them. Now, technically, the way that I've graphed them here, I would lose a half a mark on the exam because this question said graph between 0 and 2 pi. Now, for the most part on the exam, they'll change their wording and to not be as mean as this one is worded right now, the wording on the exam will probably say for at least one period. And so that allows you to go further, like I did with my arrowheads. I'm going on forever. That's what my arrowheads say. Technically, what we needed to do on this one is I should, at 2 pi, erase everything else. I should erase this. And at 0, I should erase everything here and just draw this. Now, that gets a little bit confusing because it's hard to see 
if I can really see like mistakes that I made, that my graph here at zero went higher, it's like a little bit sloppy. But for the most part, I prefer if we add the arrowheads and graph it continuing on after that. Yes? I would plot this final point to draw it, and then afterwards I'd take out my eraser and erase the extra stuff. And that's the reason they won't, they wouldn't, because it's kind of, yeah, and, and technically if you're, if you're stopping it at 2 pi, then I should be able to label this point, well, that's an eraser, but there we go, I should be able to label that point and I don't know where that point is. And so that's why on the exam they'll tend to not do that. But one of the things that we need to do for all of our trig equations, when we're finished an equation, double check what the domain was. So we should check what was the domain that they want us to graph, what was the domain that they wanted us to solve, and this often comes up more in solving questions as a way to check did we answer it all correctly. Like on the take home quiz, you might have answered between 0 and 360 degrees and then realized the domain set from negative 360 to 360. So you had more answers you needed to find. So it is good practice to check in the end, but um, the exam is very picky and so we have to learn to be picky as well. Although the exam is also, I would say, not picky in the sense to try to catch you. Like they're not, I don't think they'd put a graph question that says only from 0 to 2 pi and if you graph more we'll take marks off. As a, we want to be picky to catch you and take off marks from you. It's just naturally picky but not, not naturally picky in a mean way. If that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to, uh, from Friday, you had 3 A, B, C, and D. You can now do 3 E and F. So we're going to work a little bit on those right now.